This video talks about the Work, Health and Safety legislation and was made under the Work Cover Assist Grants program. The video provides you with an overview and insights into the key aspects of the Work, Health and Safety regulation, how it may affect you and what you can do to update your safety system with the new requirements of the legislation. This version came into effect January 2012, but these are regularly updated. The model legislation introduces the concept of a person conducting a business or undertaking, that's PCBU, on whom the primary duty of care is imposed. The reasoning behind this approach is that anyone who conducts a business or undertaking influences one or more elements that go to the performance of work and therefore may affect the health and safety of those undertaking the work or others affected by the work undertaken. You do not necessarily have to employ people to be in a position to influence the way work is done or to have an effect on the health and safety of the people doing the work. The employment relationship is not the basis of the duty of care, nor is the workplace. The duty is owned by the person conducting a business or undertaking, whether as an individual, company, a partnership, and so on. We are talking here about the legal entity that conducts the business or undertaking, and that might be you. Officers of companies or other bodies now have a duty of care to exercise due diligence to make sure that the organisation which they manage is meeting all its duties under the Act. This is a positive duty in that it is allocated to the officer in his or her own right. This is important, reasonably practicable. What is reasonably practicable is determined objectively. This means that a duty holder must meet the standard of behaviour expected of a reasonable person in the duty holder's position and who is required to comply with the same duty. There are two elements to what is reasonably practicable. A duty holder must first consider what can be done, that is, what is possible in the circumstances for ensuring health and safety. They must then consider whether it is reasonable in the circumstances to do all that is possible. This means that what can be done should be done unless it is reasonable in the circumstances for the duty holder to do something less. There are three categories of penalties which apply to breaches of the work, health and safety duties. As you can see, category one is for reckless conduct that exposes an individual to a risk of death or serious injury or illness and is engaged in without reasonable excuse. Category two is a failure to comply with a health and safety duty and exposing an individual to a risk of death or serious injury or illness. And the third, category three, is a failure to comply with a health and safety duty. You can see the size of the penalties. The size of the maximum offences for each type has significantly increased from existing provisions and continues to increase. Thank you for listening.